What is going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Willis Mackey Jr. here, professional basketball player from the Bahamas. And honestly, today I'm a little bit surprised that I never spoke about what I'm about to speak about today because I literally do overseas basketball content. I never spoke about the pros and the cons of being an overseas basketball player. So we're going to change that today. I'm going to take y'all into the world of overseas basketball, the things that I think are great, things that I think are trash. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Before we get going, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, any questions you might have for me or anything you might want to know, leave it down below. Let's start a conversation. So the first pro that we're going to talk about today is freedom. Yo, with this job comes freedom. Your obligations for the team is not nine to five. Your obligations are usually two practices in a day, which are about two hours. So for about four hours out of the day, you are obligated to do what the team is doing. After that, I can do anything I want. You are free as an athlete overseas. Usually in my day, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my day more than basketball because it's like, I already know basketball is coming. How am I going to make my day a little bit more productive outside of my two hour practice that I have today. You are so free to just venture out into other things in your life. For me personally, I've done so many things already just from freedom. I'm working on a foundation. I'm working on my merchandise. So many things I can do just outside of my practice time because I'm free. That's one of the, one of the best feelings ever of being human. And, you know, having the ability to just be free to do what you want to do. Con number one, the money does not come right away. Now, if you are a player, you know, that's just just gifted, you know, you've gone through every level of basketball, high school, college, and you have just been the guy. You just been at the best levels, just doing your thing. You will not have this problem for a player like me. And for the majority of players coming overseas, you're going to see your first paycheck and really, really question <laughs> how much this is for you. Overseas basketball is very much veteran friendly. They pay for experience. You can be better than somebody on a, on a team, but you don't have those years of experience in that league. You haven't made a name for yourself. They're, taking a, they're really taking a risk on you. Yo, listen to me. I'm going to say it right here. My first paycheck coming overseas was 550 euros per month you broke though or do you got money though i do got money but i just got 73 73 dollars yeah i mean so you're not that bro no a little bit broke <laughs> 550 euros i want y'all to take that in granted i was getting my food transportation this and that paid for. So that money was just really mine. You don't have taxes, whatever. But bro, 550 euros. When I was coming out of college, trying to get into forensic accounting, I was getting offers and seeing different listings that I was applying to upwards of 60K, almost 70K a year that I turned down to say, let me go and be a professional basketball player, taking this 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 chance, you know? This is my third season now. That was my first season. Of course, my money has substantially increased. When you are one of those guys that I mentioned earlier, you can make demands. You could say, hey, I'm not coming overseas unless it's 10,000 a month, unless it's 15,000 a month, unless it's 20,000 a month, because I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving all these things behind. I'm not coming over there unless it's this. You can do that, but when you, me, came from an NAIA school, had really one good year, you're really in a place to make no demands. You really try and take what they could give you. That's what I did. It worked out. I was able to get the player of the year my first season. Went up different leagues and went to France and I'm still in France and I'm in the place where I can start making some demands. You know, I can say, this is what I want, this is what I want. But you have to earn that over here. Like I said, it's a very veteran friendly profession. Pro number two, the ability to do what you love every single day. As I mentioned earlier in pro number one about freedom, one of the best things for me is that I get to wake up every single day and I get to play the sport of basketball and get paid for it. I can't think of a, a, of a better job than that. Like I said, it doesn't feel like a job. I'm, I'm doing what I love every single day. I'm able to try new things. I'm able to say, hey, I want to learn how to do photography. 
I want to travel Europe a little bit. I want to travel just in my area a little bit and see what these towns in France has to offer. Like you get to do all of that because basketball grants you the, the ability to do all these things. It opens up so many doors that you never knew were there. I don't want to seem like it's peaches and roses. You have to work for these things. Like in order to stay overseas, it's difficult. In order to be relevant overseas, it's difficult. But when you do what you love every single day, gives you a little bit more of a push to, you know, want to wake up and do it all over again the next day. Some days are tough. Some days I don't want to get out of bed. Some days it's like where my body's hurting. You know, when you think bigger picture, which is something that I always try to, to base my life on is the bigger picture. When you think bigger picture, what I'm doing right now is something so fulfilling and something that, hey, it's a blessing to be able to wake up every day, dribble a basketball, and at the end of the month, get a paycheck. That's just that's just that's just the facts. Con number two, being away from family and loved ones. When I was about 16 years old, I moved away from the Bahamas, went to the United States, did seven years there, three years of high school, four years of college, and then came over to Spain. And now this is my second year in France. So I'm pretty used to being away from my family. However, it doesn't make it easy. In the Bahamas, we are very close with our family members. Like it's a small place. Family means a lot to us. And it's a very family oriented country. You know what I mean? It's never been easy. I'm so, I, at times I feel so disconnected from my family and things that's going on over there with my cousins and my aunts, my uncles, whatever. Like I feel so disconnected a lot of times. And a lot of times that's hard to deal with, you know? And it's something that I think a lot of US players that I've met have trouble with because it'll be the first time that you are away from your family for so long. And don't forget on top of that, it's six hours ahead in time depending on where you are in france there's a six hour time difference from the east coast um time of of the u.s you know it's it's a struggle <laughs> i mean you have to try to find times that work best for you you know and and that could be difficult and early on coming here it was really difficult for me especially during the pandemic when i was essentially alone it was hard like i said it, it was difficult and i didn't even i didn't even lie it was hard but, you know, it's one of the things that you have to know when you come in here, you have to ask yourself if it's something that you could handle. And for me, I handled it OK, because like I said, I've been away from home since I was 16. So, like I said, any, any players that's coming over here, you need to notice and you need to understand that that's what comes with being over here. So the last and final pro that I'm going to speak about is the fact that the clubs that you play for, they pay for everything. What you see on your contract is what goes in your pocket. There's no bills. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to pay your light bill. You, have to, you don't have to pay any of this. All of that is covered by the club. You simply have to show up, play. Yeah, you have car payments. You have none of this. My biggest expense is my $20 phone bill. My family just started making me pay the Netflix bill. That I, I pay for like other subscriptions, you know, Apple Music, things like this. I'm paying maybe like $45 in subscriptions every single month these are my bills that's it you get to save money like you determine what you want to do with your money if you're making three thousand four thousand dollars in the month that is literally yours it's not taxed for u.s citizens i'm not sure how that works i'm pretty sure i think that y'all still have to pay taxes when you have to pay taxes in america i'm not sure don't quote me i'm not american bohemian but um for me in the bahamas we don't have income taxes so works out for me pretty well. You can save money. I'm working on trying to stop my savings basically, because as you know, in my first season, I was making nothing enough to just basically survive. Last season I was making more, but I had to spend a lot of my money, you know, trying to get my camera equipment, different things that I had to upgrade in my life. All of that had to be upgraded. So now I'm starting to do my savings and starting to invest and do all those different things with my money that I'm making now. And yeah, it's nice because, you know, you you get a you get an opportunity to save. And although you might not be making a lot of money, what you save is like significant compared to what most people can save out of their paychecks. You know what I mean? So that's a big, big pro for me uh, as a man that's trying to, you know, build myself up, trying to own a place, trying to, you know, solidify my finances early on in my career. And the last and final thing, which is a con it's the fact that sometimes you don't know what is next after basketball. For me, it's something that I struggle with. I'm a plan B guy always. I hate to only have a plan A, B, 
because I, I don't believe that you could put all your eggs in one basket and expect to succeed. You know what I mean? I'm always thinking of what's next just in case something happens. And having this job, a lot of times you don't know what's next. After every season, you might not get a contract again. You could get injured at any point and might have to sit out, which means that if you're sitting out, they're going to pay you for the rest of your contract. If it goes on for the next season and you're not under a contract, you're not getting any money coming in. This is the one profession that I, that I always tell this to my teammates. I tell this to my girl. I always say, like, in an instance, everything could be gone. And it's, and it's scary to think, think about it when you put it that way. Of course, this is why you prepare for these type of things. But not knowing what's next is one of the worst things I think about playing basketball overseas. And for a lot of us, we have not made money in a significant way to where if we don't receive a check, that we just going to be okay for a few years. No, like the income that we get in right now is what we need to, to keep building up our, our, our finances in order to be able to have a cushion when something does happen. That's the reality of it. And it's one of the scariest realities, if you ask me. And it's, it's a reason why I try to take care of my body. I try to let my body tell me what I should do. Because at the end of the day, like I still want to play basketball for a long time. And it's not just a one season thing. I need to protect myself. I need to protect my body and protect my interests because I also know that where I am right now is not where I want to be in a few years. So if I want to get there, I have to make sure I'm smart and I'm taking care of my body, doing the right things so that I can have a long and healthy career. So yes, guys, that is the three pros and the three cons that I have for you guys today. I hope that y'all enjoyed the video. I hope that it helped y'all out. I hope y'all Y'all got an understanding of overseas basketball and I guess some of the things that we we go through and of course some of the benefits of being an overseas basketball player. If you're looking to be an overseas basketball player, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you ASAP as I always do. Check through all my comments. There's always replies for me. You don't have to worry about that. But hey, make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel, of course, turn on the notification bell so you know anytime that I post. And with that being said, I love y'all until the next video. Peace.